Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Icons Pac-Man Arcade Set. It comes with 2,651 pieces and I built it live starting over on my old Jang Bricks YouTube channel and then finishing it on Twitch. I paid $270 US for this and at least to start with it's available only from LEGO directly. As you saw, the completed set has significant height to it. And if I just put a random minifigure next to it, it kind of puts it into context where this is larger than a good sized modular building, just as far as, you know, thinking about the, the overall volume of stuff here is concerned. There is a handle on the side that you turn to make some things happen, but that's not the only thing that you can actually interact with with this. So it's not just a, a static thing. This up here is actually a separate build. I'm gonna show you that first because when you build this, you build this first. This is basically a side desk display model for fans of the franchise. So you get the supersized ghosts. And then I think that Pac-Man is just a little bit undersized. I might be mistaken on that. I haven't compared uh, pixel sizes, but I think that's just looking a little bit, a little bit small. I might, again, I might be wrong on that, but you've got the, the printed tiles down here. Those are duplicates to what's used on the main arcade on its main screen, as are all of these tiles going around the outside, which are, as you can see, blue with just some, some, uh, some flat black printed on top to represent the walls. Most of this build here is done studs on the side. So if you look at the underside of it, well, half it's like upside down and yeah, it's kind of built weird. And over here is the underside. So that's the, the bottom of some of the pieces, but there's this thing on the back. And you see when I turn it around, you can see the ghosts that are ready to be chased and eaten. And when I push the thing back here, this little Technic axle pushing out, that just spins everything around. So it turns the tables on the ghost. Oh yeah, the eyes here are also printed. So that's a nice little side thing. Here's what the cabinet looks like without the side build on the top of it. Thankfully, so much of this is built up with regular bricks and large panels, the one by six by five panel pieces. So it gets its verticality fairly quickly as you start getting into the side builds, the side panel builds that is the sides of the cabinet. Uh, with the exception of this section right here, which obviously is a large sticker, it's an eight by 16, the largest of the stickers that Lego does. And it's against a tile piece. So you've got one of these on either side and those are just inserted into some, some little in set so it ends up being all flush here on the side but that is a rather large sticker which honestly i as someone who doesn't hate stickers would rather have seen as a as a print uh yeah definitely like like here this is three prints on large slope pieces and those are great there is a tiny bit of gap here but I i'm okay with that because the quality of this print is absolutely on point that is the type of quality that i expect and want to always see from Lego when it comes to prints. That looks really good for the, the marquee there. And then just turning this, this around the other side, again, which you see here is just another big sticker. And there's the crank, and I'll show you what that's all about in a minute. The main control shelf here in the front features two more large stickers, six by six here on tiles. And then you have the joystick, which is built up nicely. These are the corner tile pieces placed there to represent the directions. And this can be moved. It actually has the Technic bushings inside, so there's there's a return on it. Uh, it does use the drum lacquered color for the, the stock of it. It feels pretty good. It just doesn't have a gate in it, so you can move it in every in, in every direction. You know, it doesn't limit you just to forward, back, side to side, which is which is okay. But you know, it has a, a decent feel there. Maybe just a little bit loose. And then you got your start and select buttons over here. One of which does something, and it's this one. That is a sticker against a clear panel piece. And I was concerned when I saw that the sticker sheet is not clear backed itself. However, this is phenomenal. It is almost perfect, the, the appearance of it, including the fact that it's not evenly illuminated all the way around. Those things had a single bulb, they had a single source, and this really emulates that. I mean, it's, it's darn near perfect. If only there was a slot there, you could actually put a coin in or something. That's the only thing that would make it better. The representation of the screen is a significant build that's done in a number of different layers and a number of different sub-assemblies, some of which go together, some of which just get added on, uh, on, on the sides over time. But it's pretty satisfying, and I think the, the end result is good. The use of these bar pieces, just the tips of bar pieces embedded in Technic parts to show the individual little little dots around there, I think is is appropriate. Again, 
uh, tiles are used for all of the all of the sprites on there and they're all 100 printed you got an exclusive one there for the the door or the the gate i don't i don't, I don't know my my pac-man lore all that well it did play it a bit back in the day but was never particularly good at it but you can see that they've got a bunch of different versions of prints to represent the wall so you got the corner and one by two you got two by two two by three and uh, also one by three throughout there. So they didn't skimp on that. And all the way up at the top, they even have something for tracking your score. It's a little bit off right now, but they got the, the high score listed there. And if I turn this properly, there we go. So you got different numbers that will show up. It'll rotate. Where is it at? There we go. You have to just kind of line it up just right to be able to see that. But there's one, there's the next one, there's the next one. Not the best feature, but it's, you know, it's nice to have something in there. The best feature is thankfully the main one that you pay for that uses the most parts, and that is this right here. So this actually moves all throughout. They introduce one new piece for a chain link that allows you to attach anything bar size. So they use uh, uh, a cone and then a hollow stud, and then you can put the tile on top of that. And then all of these just snake around on different paths. So you got two completely separate paths, one for the blue, uh, ghost just down here and then one that's uh, that has two of the ghosts plus the actual pac-man on it then you've got this going back and forth right here and the cherry is also rotating from side to side as this goes this is very smooth there was no frustration involved in putting this together you know it definitely takes some time there are a bunch of chain links involved but when it all went into place it just is designed in such a way that it will likely not fail for you. I was very impressed. Uh, once again, it's just showing just all the extra work that Lego designers have to do that mock makers don't. They had to make this easy for anybody to assemble, even if you don't have experience with Lego and to have it successful with this complicated of a mechanism. Now there's one quirk there. As you can see, the orientation of the sprites is not maintained. And that's just because they are again, attached to chain links on the inside and you can see those chain links going around. It's not a whole lot that could have been done to avoid that, but if you watch, if you follow the Pac-Man around, it's perfect, right? It's just the ghosts that are on that on that track. Not so good, they can go upside down, completely on the side. I think they don't look so bad when they're on their sides, but when they go upside down, it's a little, little extra, a little extra weird. But it does definitely bring a lot more action, a lot more realism to this than I would have ever expected from a Lego build. Let me open this up so you can see the interior a bit. This is actually quite nice what they did for the back plate here because it uses an absolute minimal number of pieces. There's no waste back here. It just tries to fill up the space. It's very thin. It's even a little bit flimsy, but it fits in nice and snug all the way around. There's essentially no gap all the way around there and yet it is easy to just pull this out there's a, a ball joint on the other side and you can see all of this is just hooked down it's not even attached with any studs or anything super super simple and minimal so there's the high score drum and you can see it's actually geared up a little bit which is why when you turn it just a little bit from the outside it moves a bit more so you have to be a little bit a little bit slow and careful with that. This uses the breadboard two of the breadboard style of huge Technic plate that just has a ton of a uh, ton of pin holes in it and holes all the way around the outside. It's a it's a brilliant piece. It's a really really useful piece. I think this is the second set to use it. Is it the second or the, or the third set to use it? Just a plain black color is the yeah, definitely the the most useful of all. Took a you know, a significant amount of time to put all that stuff in there to push everything in but you know i think it was definitely worth it and then here is the gear train this is the only thing we have to be a little bit careful or i recommend you be a little bit careful just when you put this small gear train in make sure that especially this axle and axis right here is loose so there's a little bit of a little bit of play from side to side make sure that uh, you don't squish all this together as hard as possible it'll just add too much friction in it it's just something to always watch out for with technic which i personally think that lego needs to do a little bit better job of of educating the public about because that can be the make or break and in some sets it can be the make or break for how well the function works but here's all of it working together just turn in the the um, i should go this way it's the proper proper way the crank on the outside yeah not a whole lot of gears there you got some some bevels uh, there's a yeah obviously a very simple mechanism here 
and yeah, it just it just does its job, and it's very smooth, and again, gave me no static whatsoever. And then there's this gem over here. Lego had some some part budget left over, and once again, they included something charming off to the side, or on the inside in this case, that you can use just off to the side. They could easily have made this its own standalone product. As a matter of fact, it's worth still asking them to do it because a lot of people would like to have just this, a minifig scale, little bit of arcade. The main thing here is to have the cabinet itself with some stickers, which includes giving you the, the game screen there. Um, yeah, all of this is pretty darn accurate, you know? It looks really, really good. And then they got the gumball machine over here, uh, bar st style stool, and an old uh, just garbage can in the proper 80s colors. I mean, this just looks like it comes right from an arcade or, yeah, an arcade. Totally an arcade. Or you know, maybe like a Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. You know, the 80s style floor tiling there and everything. It's just, it's, it's incredibly good. Doesn't look that great around the back, but I mean, is that really that big of a deal? I don't think so. The build for this is nice and solid. We need to look at that figure up close too. So yeah, that's a Pac-Man specific jacket and undershirt there. Unfortunately, the print for this is not great. For that torso, the white is not nearly white enough. If you look at it objectively, you can see that it definitely could have been significantly better. And knockoff manufacturers and you know third parties do better prints, do bright whites against dark colors all day long. Lego has shown us many, many times that they are perfectly capable of doing light prints against dark backgrounds. They've done it. It's doable. It's not a big deal, especially for an expensive set like this and an exclusive new print like that. I mean, this should have splurged just a little bit for just one more, one more layer, or a little bit more ink or paint on that. I also like this, this uh, head print, uh, the face print, because the lines are just a little bit thicker than usual. I don't know if that was the intent here, but it just makes for a slightly different looking face. You know, it's it's subtle, but I like that. I like a little bit of diversity in, in everything when it comes to, to uh, interchangeable Lego pieces, especially that represent people and stuff. So yeah, it, this is good design, just subpar production on the torso. Here are the extra parts, which thankfully include a full set of the printed sprite pieces, as well as the five denomination coin. And then most importantly, this is the brand new piece that allows this whole thing to work. So there's a chain link, chain link with a bar sticking out the side of it. So you can stick anything, you know, anything that works with that can be attached to it or anything that can be adapted to this can be attached to it. You can clip things onto it. You can put, you know, things over it. Uh, yeah, that's basically what what does it? What's, what allows the entire mechanism to work? The main key thing in there. So this is going to be a, a really useful piece for sure for a lot of custom builds coming up. And I hope that we get them in a lot more sets as well. So they become very available. As for stickers, the set used a, a significant sheet. We already saw the two big ones. You got a bunch of little ones, especially for the high scores or for the scores and then the arcade. And then you also have the giant ones, the giant eight by 16. So this is, this is a lot of sticker coverage. Again, I paid $270 US. It is 270 euros, 230 pounds UK, $350 Canadian, which translates to about a little over $260 US. And it's 2,600 and some pieces. So, you know, price to part ratio. I don't care about price to part ratio. A ton of the parts in this are tiny. But, thankfully, a large number of the parts, an unusual number of the parts, are pretty big, actually. I think for the amount of stuff, not just the not just the size of the completed model, but when you consider the density of what's inside, the total amount by LEGO standards today for something that is that is licensed, I think the price isn't too far off. I personally would have preferred if this had been sold as a separate thing for like, I don't know, they probably could have charged like 20 bucks for this, honestly. It shouldn't, but... You know, it should be 10, but they could have probably charged 20 bucks for it and, and people would have forked it over um, without a second thought. And I think this should have been something separate as well. Now, I've heard the marketing messages that 
Lego has pushed out through the ambassador network. It's not the first time that they've done this. They say, well, actually, it's the partner that wanted this. It's Bandai Namco that wanted that wanted this other stuff added on. But they don't give you full context for that. Remember, marketing's job is to make you, the customer, want to spend money on it and to feel feel cust- uh, feel comfortable, which is which is fine. That's that's good. That's how that's how it works. But we don't have the context of well. Was it that the designer came up with this perfectly good arcade and was happy with it and did not mat did not meet the bean counters target budget for it and they still had a bunch of parts budget left over and then one of the teams that engages with outside with IP partners went to Bandai Namco and said, "Hey, we've got a whole bunch of budget left over. We need this to be more expensive. What can we do with the extra parts? What else would you like us to build?" And then not, uh, Bandai Namco was like, "Hey, what if you build a thing up on top of it with like the ghosts and, and the thing? You know, as an extra like a 3D sign." And like, hey, so context is really important for that. I take things that come through marketing with a grain of salt because it's marketing and, and they're they're doing their job. But that's fine. But all I'm saying is I would prefer <laughs> Would have preferred if the extra stuff had been kept off to the side so that folks who want this could have been able to get this as cheap as reasonably possible. Probably could easily have gotten this down to like the 230 range, which would have felt a lot more comfortable for its for its size. But the thing that's here is good. You know, this is this build is phenomenal. It's actually a little bit taller, it has a little bit more shelf presence, especially when you add this on top of it. Than I expected. You know, this grabs your attention. It's good. <laughs> the little thing is nice too, but the mechanism on the inside took a lot of time to to build. Kind of, I was maybe going a little bit fast, kind of beat up my hands a little bit because a lot of Technic pins and things going going together. But that's fine. Again, it's smooth. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, yeah, super super hassle free. That's great. This, you know, that light brick down there. Added a lot to the to the price. Worth it, completely worth it, and it's implemented so well. So so much about this is so good. And you can see again with the the back being as thin as it is, they didn't try to bulk it up. They use again a lot of large uh, panel pieces and large tiles to fill up large spaces. Trying to be efficient with it, and I appreciate all of that. The only major question that's that's left is if you primarily want something that looks like this for the sake of nostalgia or the sake of uh, retro chic or something you want a little representation of a pac-man arcade um does it need to be lego if it does not need to be lego if leg if the, the lego-ness of it all if the lego build of it all is not the most important thing to you then you could pay this same amount and get a larger countertop unit that's actually playable and has 10 games in it for the same price. And it also has the sounds. Most importantly, it has the sounds. If you want that nostalgia, one of the most important things is the sound. You don't get the sound from this, any even attempt at it, right? You get a little bit of sa- you get static sight, you get a little bit of movement, and you get this down here. That light is good, but you don't get the sound. You don't obviously get to play it. You don't get nine other games as well that you can play over time. You get the nice display value. You get that initial build as well. This took me one day to build. You know, not even a not even a full day. Uh, if you t- if you take your time, you can spread it out over some number of days and everything. But you know, a lot of a lot of times, folks who are focused primarily on Lego will say, "Well, think about the build experience. The build experience on this was really good. It feels good. It was very satisfying through and through. You got detail bits. You got technical bits. You got size. You got bright colors and stuff. I like it. I like it. But it's a one-time thing. And after that." Like if I decide to keep this now, which I am considering it, <laughs> I'm not fully decided, but I am considering it. If I decide to keep this, it's just gonna be on display. And it's something that I can point at and say, hey, that's Lego. But I could also have gotten a console of this size, again, from Arcade 1UP, that has just the Pac-Man game in it, that plays for $150. Okay, that's $120 less than this. That's significant. That's what, 40%-ish? something in that range, less than this. That's significant. And that has all the nostalgia of a good looking, good looking uh, cabinet, has a screen that actually works. You can actually play the thing. It has the sounds to play and everything like that. And for the most part, that thing that's available right now today, commercially new, that costs significantly less than this, has the same value, more in some ways, but 
the same primary value as a display item. So I'd, I'd ask the question, that's it. I ask the question. For many people, especially people watching a Lego specific channel on YouTube, the answer is gonna be, well, Lego. Better because Lego. Lego wins because Lego. That's fine. That's fine. I just encourage folks to recognize that Lego is not everything in the world, even if you are a Lego fan. If you see something like this and it grabs you for nostalgia, not for the Lego of it, but for the IP of it or for the source material of it, look around, see what else you can get. Think about the Captain America uh, shield that was recently an announced as of the time of recording this video in the middle of 2023. They had announced the Captain America shield, which you can't even hold. It's big, it's great, but it's Lego. You get an actual wieldable shield that is a good replica for significantly less. That's all. I just like to encourage people to think about that if you want to. But if you like this, if you like the Lego of it, I think that the value here is reasonable within the Lego sphere. Would, would love if it, if it had a little bit less of this, although this does add, but it, this is extremely heavy and dense. So I think that alone could have cost a lot less. But again, it's, it's not extortionate. It's not exorbitant for this amount of Lego stuff by today's standards. You compare it to the amount of stuff. I mean, this is heavy. This is like good sized modular building amount of stuff. And there's a good significant build experience to it as well. So I'm not going to be one to, to sit here and say that as a Lego set, it's exorbitantly expensive. I think that as a Pac-Man, as a miniature Pac-Man arcade that is primarily going to be used for static display, it is exorbitantly expensive. That's all. Thank you for watching. I hope that this was of value to you and I'll talk to you again soon.